If you've been using the Nikon ZR, then you probably have noticed that the exposure monitoring tools aren't that accurate. When the waveform IRE levels are above 80 IRE in log 3 G10 space, information is lost in the highlights and vice versa. As such, in this video, I'll demo the false color 3D LUT I created to dial in perfect exposure, show some sample clips in the wild from my daily life in Tokyo, Japan, then finish with the LUT creation process using Python and DaVinci Resolve. Resolve. The 3D LUT, Resolve Power Grade, and Gradient Creation Code are located here in my GitHub repository. Alright, let's get started. So I've set up two cameras. The one behind me is my Fujifilm X-T4, and the one in front is the Nikon ZR. And I think this is the only way I could do it so you can see how the LUT works. First off, if you look into the screen here, this is just flat log, no 3D LUT on. And view assist doesn't work when the 3D LUT is on anyway. So I'll stop the recording on the Nikon. I've already set it up. When I go to view assist on, you can see my face there. And this is the LUT in the log space, 3G310 or something. And just a sanity check to see that is really working. And I have this really small practical light here. I'm going to turn it on, this bright white light. And you should see that it's clipping around here because it's super bright. But if I bring it closer to my face, it's causing my face to become red, which is near clipping or hopefully clipping. And now if I bring this over here, you can see that the highlight is much sharper here compared to before. You can do it on this side as well, top down. That's it for the practical demo. Now let's see it in practice. Oh yeah, it's a case. It's a case, so you can attach the candles and stuff. Candles? Yeah. It's yeah. For light, for candle. No, no, no like, like, candle, like, candle. like a handle. Ah, a handle. Not, I not a candle. candle. <laughs> I cooked on the um, curry buns for breakfast. Oh, curry buns? <laughs> curry buns. What do you mean by curry donuts? Curry donuts. 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 Nice so, butter ramen. Mm. The ramen in the US is Hello. Hey. I'm Alex. This is Chris. Hi, Alex. Chris. Nice to meet you. Paul, thank you. Our comms team. <laughs> I remember, I remember talking with you about, like in February, and you, you were saying, oh, I'm trying to work. They want more precise control, very like how they do things in Photoshop. Yeah. So yeah. this requires like specialized product built upon all yeah, these yeah. AI models. Similar to, I don't know. They had bread. 
It was like a red face or something. So yeah, there's that, and they were saying that we want to talk with and Nano Banana is really good for edit of uh, pictures. I took a picture of my son and said, okay, let's uh, put him in a suit. Before getting into creating the false color 3D LUT, we need to make sure that we're working in the correct color space and that the base transform to Rec. 709 is consistent. On the Nikon ZR, they already have a Rec. 709 conversion, but I just want to double confirm that the one from DaVinci Resolve is exactly the same as the one in the camera. Otherwise, this could go very badly. This is the online manual and on page 749 for the G15 3D LUT, it confirms that we're working in the log 3 G10 color space. So all we have to do is set up a color transform in DaVinci Resolve from log 3 G10 to Rec. 709. Here's a sample clip of a GIF that some of my friends gave me, Alt S, and then go to the library, search transform, color space transform, drag that on. I'm doing node-based color management and your input color space is actually going to be the red wide gamut because this is red footage. And then your gamut is red log 3 
G10. Output color space is on use timeline, but let's just make it Rec 709. So that's it. That's how you get your log footage from your camera into the correct Rec 70 transform. And if you go to the bottom left with the camera raw settings, red wide gamut RGB log 3 G10. We're just doing whatever is here in the node. Now we have to get this LUT or transform off of our computer and onto our camera. And that's pretty simple. So just come down here to the bottom left, right click, generate LUT, and I choose 65, but I'll just make a new folder. I think you can only do this with a micro SD card, but I'm not sure. And you have to create a LUTs folder inside the Nikon folder. On the right is the LUT I just created. I'm just going to rename it because when you save it from Resolve, it gives it a really weird name. So I'll just do this one and copy and paste it over here. By the way, a lot of these are strictly for resolve only and they won't work in the camera, just so you know, even though I downloaded them from the website. They're not a 3D monitoring LUT. Here we are, and this is without any view assist or 3D LUT on for sanity's sake. To install the LUT, just long press video, 3D LUT, import cube file, and find the one we made. It should have a YouTube one this one and I'll save it as unused down here. Let's just compare with the default. So this Rec. 709 one is from Nikon for red. For the sake of demoing this correctly, I am switching to my cell phone. This is with the base built in Rec. 709 conversion off and on again. Now let's go ahead and use our Resolve one. So change this. Instead of using their default, we'll switch to ours, the one we created in Resolve. Come back here, on, and what do you know? They look pretty similar to me. Some might say the same. To construct the false color LUT, we first need this gradient here in log 3G10 space. I wrote some Python code over here on the right and then ran it inside my WSL2. Most notably, my anchor point is middle gray 18% and it should be around 33.33 IRE. Skin tones are just one stop above that. I used 47.5 as the average. So let's just head into Resolve and this will make a lot more sense. I have two versions. One is labeled with what I'm going to do to them and then one is just pure like so. But the real important thing is to check that the IRE values are consistent consistent. So I'm going from 0 to 100 in the waveform. This is working. Now that it's more apparent of what's going on here with the waveform, go ahead and key the values. So I'm going to follow whatever I have on my labeled ones, so red, yellow, orange, at these parts. I'm going to have to do all of these in parallel nodes. The Alt P creates the parallel nodes like that, but we want it on the next one. So not this one. Add a serial and then Alt P like that. Might be too many, but that's okay. First one's going to be red. Make sure you're labeling well. Those look fine for now. First one is red. Once you take your qualifier tool here and click on that, you can do Shift H to see what selection you're picking up. So you've actually picked up a lot of these. You can fix that by turning off the feathering here and then moving around just to make sure you pick up this piece. Very key. And this can go all the way up here. And afterwards, you want to make this red. So just pump that all up like so. You've done it. Let's just do a few more examples. Next one is orange. I originally had yellow here on accident. That doesn't make sense because orange is closer to red. So pick that one up, turn off the feathering or softness and move it up. So you're going to pick up just this block here and that will be orange. And to get orange, pull all of these up and all of these down. And there's your orange, time for yellow. So these are swapped, remember? Same thing, it's pretty tedious the first time. Pulled it down. To get yellow, pull all of these blue outputs down. Doesn't really matter what it is. Next ones are gray and you don't need that. So we have pink, pick that, shift H. Okay, this one should be pink, okay, like that. And then we have gray and then green. And I'm just gonna copy paste 
So we have all the colors set up now. However, we're not done. Let's save this, grab the still. So it's here. And now we have to make sure these values line up properly on a smooth gradient. Back in coding mode, and I've created a smooth gradient. Same logic, 16 bits. Done. I've brought it into Resolve and this is what it looks like now. Apply the grade that we just created. It's not completely clean and there's things overlapping. And this is where we can dial in the values to make sure there's no overlap. Here on red, it's not completely catching that lower spectrum. Pull that in. Orange may be leaking into yellow too much. Let's just make sure. Or maybe yellow is leaking too much into orange. So let's just pull that down. This is really personal preference now. Pink, green, and then blue. Let's handle blue. This one has to be further down like that. Before going on to the final steps, I actually want to distinguish a little bit more with the green. So I'll have two versions of green. I can also have two versions of pink if you want. This is what I had when I was playing around. Let's add one more parallel one, Alt P. Duplicate this dark green, so Control c Control v here. Move it down, you can see the overlap, it's pretty apparent. Move up the lower band, set your brighter green color. And it looks good to me. For all intents and purposes, we're near the end. False color RE, log 65. Cool thing about this is, remember we captured a still already. So we actually can just apply this color grade over here to this image, because we're in log space. I won't do a Rec 709 conversion but this will be more clear than what I show you on the camera screen so just take this scrub over it the pink is the skin tones and then my shirt is completely black this teal let's go find some footage where there's highlights Okay, this clip over here should be pretty good. Now I want to point out a gotcha when I was putting together this LUT. Here is a clip from Starbucks where my colleagues and I went after having lunch. Information is basically unrecoverable here. It tops out near 80. Why is that? And even if we apply the LUT here, we don't get anything here. Why? Shouldn't this be getting red? No, but it's getting the skin tone or the pink and green. So what's going on here? I've also loaded up the LUT that we just created on my camera. I'm pointing it at a completely white image. So it should be turning red, but it's not. It only turns yellow if I turn up the ISO. If I went from 800 to 3200 ISO, that turns yellow, which is still not red. Now I'll show what's really up. Fresh clip with the same grade, but I've added this this color space transform in front. It's from Rec 709 to the red log 3G10 space. I want you to notice the scopes over here. If I enable this, it automatically clips down to 80 and 70. Curious. If we go back to the Starbucks pastry clip, oh wow, it's at 80 and 70. So why don't we try tuning this LUT so that it accommodates for these new range of values. This is the new version. Here's the color space transform. Let's go ahead and apply it to a smooth gradient again. This is the new adjusted one on the smooth gradient and export it once again. Installed the fixed LUT on my camera and if we look at this white generator background, what do we see here? What is that? ISO 800, orange and red. Hmm, wow, amazing. 